10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack Wack Attack, today is April 11th and I have to admit this is one of the busiest episodes I have ever recorded but I will not hit one hour. So let's get started. So the first thing that I would like to talk to you about is this proposal that was created on by the ODAO and it says proposal created, Rocket Pool 2 created proposal number 13 and description of the proposal is Atlas Smart Contract Upgrade version 1.2. So this is a proposal that will bring Atlas to Mainnet. Um, over here then we had Darren um, who provides some information about what this proposal means. He says, hey everyone, uh, we have just raised the proposal to upgrade Atlas. There is a seven day delay before the ODAO can begin voting. Sigma Prime are wrapping up their final review and once that is concluding, we can verify the contract. Over the next seven days, we will do the following. Verify the upgraded contract tomorrow. The contract is currently not verified, but will be tomorrow. Um, open Atlas code up for the immune fire bug bounty tomorrow. Lock the upgrade contract after the next RPL reward interval. Part of the release includes storing the RPL reward interval. And so we cannot lock the release until after the interval. And that happens on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then it says, uh, review by community and ODAO next seven days. At different stages, the community and ODAO have the opportunity to review um, to have the opportunity to review the upgrade. And it says, we look forward to deploying Atlas. So this was from April 9th, a couple of days ago. Um, so they want to make sure that everything is ready before the code goes to mainnet on um, on next 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 week. And then um, later on, like earlier today, uh, Lang has given an update about the Sigma Prime news. He says Sigma Prime has uh, completed their fixed check review and we're good to go. The upgrade contracts have been verified and we encourage you to check them out. The following tool verifies that the deployed contracts match the source code in GitHub. Then there's a link to GitHub. And it says, bear in mind the tool would point out that the upgrade contract is not locked. We will lock the contract after the next rewards period and communicate when it is done. Additionally, we're excited to announce that the Atlas code has been merged and is now part of the our Immunify bug bounty program. This means that white hat hackers are welcome to review our code and submit any bugs they find with rewards up to $250,000 available. So that's a sliding scale where the rewards will start off a little bit um, lower, um, like for you know minor minor bugs, and as the bugs get more serious, the uh, amount of reward available goes higher. Um, one issue that I have with this is that uh, Rocket Pool is now over a one billion dollar protocol in total value locked, and you know RPL is just a small price pump away from being over a billion dollar token. Um, you know number fifty eight fifty nine in the top one hundred. Well, out of all tokens, um, it's it's doing really well, right? Our ETH just broke into the top one hundred as well. Um, I think that two hundred fifty thousand dollar immune fight bug bounty is not good enough. Um, in all honesty, like we saw, um, stuff like Euler, um, which has which had a TVL that was much much smaller, um, had a hack, even though their bug bounty program was up to a million dollars. Um, it's it's, I think it's something that um, the team slash community really should think about increasing that to a million dollars at least, but. Hey, maybe that will happen at some point in the next few months. Um, I've not really heard anything about that, I think. Um, but definitely, like, you know, uh, this is now available. Um, so if you found a bug that you were sitting on uh, in testing, <laughs> you can now claim up to a quarter of a million dollars, which will buy you a whole lot of RPL. Um, okay, um, so um, Maverick said, you know, since everyone's... Um, enjoying the atlas party i'll be talking about that in a bit um he says it's probably a good time to remind node operators among us that all rocket pool node operators must upgrade to um, smart node version 1.9.0 or later to ensure support for the chapella atlas um, so if you're on docker mode you need to update uh, basically uh, today or early tomorrow before the fork goes live uh, before uh, Shanghai uh, Capella fork happens on Ethereum mainnet. If you're in hybrid mode, then uh, you need to make sure that your um, execution and consensus layer clients are updated before sh um, Shanghai and Capella and um, your uh, smart node is updated before um, the 17th and 6th days time. So um, make sure that you are up updated. Um, Invis made this bot 
that gives you an idea of um, where people are and this is the graph below shows proposal starts using five day rolling window and does not represent operator adoption versions with the proposal in the last two days are emphasized so here we've got um, a list of all the different versions that people on on main are using we still have 12 percent of people on version 1.7.0 um, version 1.9.0 and version 1.9.1 have around I want to say like nearly 70 to 75 percent adoption right now uh, we really need to get that number to 100 percent um like as soon as possible um because anything older than that will miss the hard fork and you won't be testing anymore so definitely upgrade your uh, smart note <laughs> upgrade your smart note stack um get up to the latest software just to make sure that you're ready for um shanghai um and capella and also then atlas after that um i i expect there to be a chunk of people who will fall off um as the ethereum hard fork happens and then they'll be rushing to um update their software after they've stopped this testing but that's that's what always happens i'm just hoping that that number is as small as possible so if you are watching this and if you have not updated your node to the latest software i want you to pause this video right now or pause this podcast right now and go and update your smart node um to get it fixed Okay, next we had the bi-weekly uh, update that came out um, from uh, Maverick um, earlier today. And I'm just going to go through this really quickly because it's way too busy. And um, this episode is already like huge. So we have the RE supply has gone up by 7.1%. Mini pool count has grown, up, grown by 1.5%. Effective RPL has pretty much stayed flat. It's gone down by 0.2%. And node operator count has grown by 2% as well to nearly 2300 and then um, this is the last bi-weekly before Atlas. So there's information about Atlas. Um, and then version 1.9.1, which is a low priority update unless you're in the ODAO. Um, and 1.9.0, which will get you through um, min hard fork. I'm surprised that we actually haven't had a 1.9.2 with like last minute um, um, client releases, but that's really cool. Um, then the R&D, the Atlas contracts have been deployed. <laughs> And then as part of Atlas preparation, the deposit pool was increased by 13,000, which was filled in 12 hours. Um, website redesign is continuing. Um, I'm not sure when that's going to go out. I don't think the community's even seen uh, mock-ups of that yet. And then um, Oracle's prov uh, going on to ZK Sync for our ETH. And then integrations, there's Arcadia, Teller, um, State Index token that has our ETH, Reserve Protocol, DAP Node are working uh, on LEB 8s, uh, all nodes are um, also going to be working with LEB 8s, but also providing support for solo stake migration, which is amazing. And then parallel pr protocol as well with governance. Coinbase joined the ODAO, IMC um, launched um, a Uniswap pool, and then the vote that I'm going to talk about later. And then grants round two with media marketing. We had Swiss Capital talking about um, Rocket Pool. A whole bunch of articles and news from Crypto News, CoinDesk, Coin Edition, CoinGecko, Decrypt, um, Invez, and You Today. And then there's uh, Twitter Spaces with Teller, Eat Staker, Crypto Task Calculator. Um, videos mentioning Rocket Pool, including Allcoin Daily and a YouTube influencer. Um, and it says RPL achieved a high social engagement score as me measured by Lunar Crash, which is really cool. Um, then we had. Um, Nouns uh, launched a program to incentivize solo stakers that I'm going to be talking about, um, and that includes Rocket Pool operators. Um, and then Langers was interviewed by Staking Rewards. Mav, if you're listening to this, or Joe, if you're listening to this, tell Mav he missed out Langers on Rocket Fuel. I'm so disappointed about that. And then we had community members creating video guides on how to convert um, 16 ETH mini pools and 8 ETH mini pools. So that was from Lee and Direct. I'm not sure who that is. That's cool. I saw Lee stuff. And then Block Native covered Rocket Pool in the Comprehensive Staking Guide, which is really great. So um, it was a really busy couple of weeks for Rocket Pool, as we all know. Um, next, uh, we had more updates coming through. So Joe says the ODAO, uh, good news everyone, the ODAO successfully transitioned over using the TWAP, which is the time-based time something it's a time-based oracle basically for price reporting of RPL. Um, so Valdov said yes. Um, so that that got done. And then, um, yeah, that was that's nice because it was another step in making the order a bit more efficient. 
Okay, <laughs> next is something really great that happened yesterday. So um, the RPL benefactor was uh, doing some teasing and like deleting some messages in uh, trading. And then uh, we got this um, Etherscan transaction from the benefactor that showed 1000 um, 1, RPL tokens coming into their wallet, which was worth $47,800. Um, and then um, the benefactor um, said, thank you, Thomas. So um, I guess this um, thousand RPL came from Thomas. Um, previous uh, two batches of uh, benefactions um, came from Patricio uh, via Fizz. So um, this, I guess, Thomas, they don't want to get left behind in the celebrations. Um, it And yeah, so the benefactor says, thank you, Thomas. And then Thomas um, posted uh, this... Uh, little um pepe baby pepe i guess i don't know what this meme is called um giving uh, the rpl to another baby pepe so that was that was really nice like a uh, nice little message there from uh, from thomas for that um so then um the benefactor uh, gave their rules which are a little bit different this time compared to before uh, the benefactor says um i have 1000 rpl to distribute to the community thank you thomas i have new rules this time so it says 500 messages in this Discord um, over three months. And then this is my discretion. Um, 10 RPL for good work and 5 RPL if I think you should work harder. Also my discretion. Um, DM me making your case with your address. The stronger your case, the more likely you are to get 10 RPL. No nominations. Um, use this RPL to party for Atlas. So the benefactor then went and clarified a couple of things here that people were kind of confused about. So the first rule here was um, 500 messages in this Discord over three months. So um, the benefactor later explained that it wasn't um, that you you had to put out 500 messages in the last 90 days. It was that your account had to be over three months old. Like you had to be part of the community since the beginning of January at least. Um, ideally longer than that um, and the, the, my discretion thing kind of showed up a couple of times over the um, over the evening when the benefactor was giving out RPL yesterday um, because some people had fewer than 500 messages but they still got one or two RPL um, I guess depending on the work they've done <laughs> so it was really cool that the the benefactor was um, still giving um, RPL to people even though um, they might not have been around as much as others so um, yeah, a whole bunch of people got RPL, um, which was um, which was really great. And um, a hashtag came out of it, Atlas Party, which is what um, which is what um, uh, Maverick was uh, referring to earlier. Um, so um, pe the benefactor started giving out the the RPL, and then um, benefactor said, "I'm done for tonight." Um, distributed three hundred and ninety one RPL. And then um, Thomas says, I have over 5,000 messages in here. It's wild from all the people thanking Thomas for the RPL. And um, he went on to explain. Um, he says, you're welcome, everyone. Got tagged so many times, I can't reply to them all. Uh, but I hope everyone enjoys the party and does a bit to spread the word. This is when Rocket Pool will really take off. Um, and Thomas says, I also finally learned the truth that the RPL benefactor is really a pre-release of GPT-5. So... Um, Thomas um, really um, stepping it up and doing some um, really cool work and um, getting getting RPL out. Um, it's it's amazing. Like that, basically, I think the total amount that's been given out by the benefactor so far is over um, hundred thousand um, dollars over the last. I think since December, um, which is absolutely amazing that there's so much generosity in this community. Um, I really like the idea of using this um, RPL to party uh, for Atlas. Um, it means that, you know, everyone who's gotten some RPL should be involved in um, Atlas celebrations, Shanghai celebrations, really getting the word out there that, you know, this is amazing. Um, so I think the benefactor uh, was telling people to tweet about it too. So a whole bunch of tweets went out about that. Okay, so next we have this... Um, Next, we have this um, update about the IMC membership selection. So, so we had nine members being voted on. The vote is now finished. Uh, if you voted, you can go and pick up your POAP for your, for voting. Um, the votes came through as um, Jasper, Valdorf, Langers, Noshua, Whisker, 
Romana, um, Denum, uh, Non Fungible Yoakum, and Phil's the ETH, um, aka Phil's Cares. So, Dr. Worm, Daisy Dog, and uh, Halzen missed out, but thank you so much for you know putting yourselves forward for this. Um, it was a wonderful field with, with really great people. Um, like I said, go and get your pot for this. I already minted mine and uh, make sure that you you know you keep voting in these elections um there was a worry that we might not reach quorum for a few days there but we went way beyond quorum so that was really great um i think this um this committee is going to do some really really great stuff so thank you everyone who's part of this um i think the term runs for one year so um they'll carry on doing their stuff which is fantastic Okay, so Joe um, had this update yesterday and he says, okay guys, important request. We just published an update to the node op docs that organize them more cleanly in a step-by-step -step fashion to hopefully make it easier to follow. Um, it looks like this now. So one one of the very, very, very few criticisms I had of the node document, um, node documents, node setup documents on um, the website and the docs website was that sometimes it was difficult to navigate from one section to the other but um they uh, you know the joe and i guess people who have contributed to that um have cleaned that all up now so the the information is a lot easier to see and then uh, joe says most of the folders come with an overview page that looks like this So it's giving you a little bit more information about like what you learn in that section. Like for example, it says in this section, you learn how to install the Rocket Pool Smart Node stack onto your node machine. There are several different uh, flavors of installation. You learn which one is right for you and walk through the installation process for it. And then it has prerequisites and all that kind of stuff. So um, Joe says, would you guys mind scrutinizing and giving feedback, submitting uh, pull requests for fixes? So I'm sure that a whole bunch of people will like read through that, figure out that everything is laid out properly and give good feedback to make sure that it's all set for um, hopefully a huge influx of node operators next week. Okay, next we had this post from um, Ken uh, that was uh, leading up to um, this request from Dr. Doofus. Um, Dr. Doofus wrote a forum post uh, last week saying, I'd like to see Invis reinstated. And then um, Ken said, um, let me add some commentary, basically giving information about um, Invis taking responsibility for his actions, apologizing to uh, Marceau, and uh, taking uh, proper pr procedures for reporting issues in the future. Um, and then um, um, uh, Ken came back um, yesterday and uh, with an update on this, he says, I'm delighted to have learned from Dave and Invis that based on Invis's published apology and the community's input and advocacy, the team has decided to reduce Invis's restriction from the server um, from 12 months to three months. By my calculation, Invis should be able to join us in trading to celebrate Star Wars Day. So that's May 4th, which is just over a month away. And um, Ken says, thank you to all of those who have taken the time to share your perspectives on this matter. I'm sharing this news with the community with the consent of Dave and Invis. Um, so that is really wonderful and people are really happy that Invis will be coming back soon. Okay, Joe again um, with uh, good news, everyone. And he gave us an update on the Proteus's Wave 2. He says, I just made the first Proteus of Wave 2. Tomorrow shall be figure out who's um, in it and organize accordingly day. So, you know, I think there'll be about 50. I'm not sure. Give or take um, Protei in Wave 2. So Joe will be like ranking those by order, I guess, of that he received the, the um, um, applications and we'll be sending them out in the order as or as close as possible. Um, and Joe says that this uh, Proteus will replace a Pi that someone is using as their main node. And this was a special uh, request because of that. I haven't forgotten the guys in wave one that swapped from passive to active. Don't worry. Um, and I'm one of those people and um, I haven't got my Proteus yet. And that is not Joe's fault, that is my fault. Joe reached out to me asking for um, a design for my vanity plate and I still haven't gotten back to Joe. So I'm so sorry, Joe. I will try to get on that as soon as possible. Um, things have just been like really busy. Okay, um, next we've got a whole bunch of like um, um, integrations of um, 
of our ETH. Um, so here we had one from Arcadia Finance saying new collateral asset alert. Uh, we've added Rocket Pool's our ETH as collateral in Arcadia. And then this is a key line where it says borrowers can now leverage our ETH up to seven to a six to seven X with very low liquidation risk. Check it out here after Arcadia Finance. Uh, arcadia.finance slash trade and then wolf says wolf 69 i asked them to clarify what that meant and wolf said uh, when you say six to seven x leverage is that like folding st eth on um, ave and how does leverage work in arcadia fi so the arcadia people replied by saying no need to fold the steps to and the steps are basically borrow eth swap borrowed eth and previously deposited his ETH to ST ETH, I guess our ETH in this situation, via best route, uh, like EG, uh, one inch, etc. Then deposit uh, the ST ETH back or the R ETH back, and it all happens in one atomic and gas efficient transaction. So, what they mean by um, by that is like, and then it says you can select decide size and leverage via the DAP. We're still improving our uh, UI UX, but it's fully functional. So I guess it just kind of happens um, in the one click. Uh, there's a recipe, um, a one click recipe for that and the transaction that does it. I still don't fully understand what is happening to get that um, yield increase uh, by um, six to um, seven X. I guess it must be some kind of folding that's happening, but automatically. But if anyone can explain this in like better detail than the Arcadia Finance people who <laughs> did in this tweet, please let me know because um, I'm very curious to um, find out what's going on there. Okay, and then we got uh, Bago Bago Gel or Bago Gel um, had this um, screenshot of the Silo Finance is um, incentive program season two. And then there's a whole bunch of different tokens that they'll be incentivizing here. And um, the for the on the Ethereum, um, the token that they're incentivizing the most is um, our ETH with um, twelve million dollars. I'm sorry, twelve thousand dollars, not twelve million dollars. Twelve thousand dollars of monthly um, rewards allocation going to um, our ETH, which is actually the biggest. Um, set of rewards allocation that they're doing on um on mainnet and the second biggest across all of their um incentives only second to arbitrum's arb token on arb so it's really great that um uh, protocols like silo finance now are seeing the um, that it's not just market cap of a token that ma matters but also like the other attributes that are attached to it and then valdov had um had a really good comment about this he said these people are the real mvps they're valuing something other than market dominance so that is a really good um it's a really good um marker put out by silo finance that they're valuing things that are more than just um more than just um market cap okay and then another um Another thing here we had from Myself Finance, uh, it says, hey, as mentioned by Valdorf above, the treasury would be neutral um, lender in terms of wanting to help the community. So here we have a new product that uh, Myself Finance and Miso Finance are working on, and it's um, RPL lending, um, basically so people could use it to stake maybe or do other stuff with that. And this is a, a MISO or MISO. Uh, we're um, actually close to a fully audited, updated version. And within weeks, a borrow side release, lender side will come shortly thereafter, where it will be much easier for a lender, also open to public lenders, not restricted access, to quote multiple tenors and fee terms. Uh, what portion of uh, front upfront fee and collateral, what portion of APR and repay on multiple tokens, all from the same vault, which will be a way more convenient and capital efficient. Uh, so if, and that's a big if, there are any RPL holders uh, who are willing for the right price to loan out their RPL, then they will be able to quote that price and it's up to the market maker at that point um, whether they want to accept that or not. <coughs> So I think that's great that uh, they're working on these like really cool integrations. Okay, next we've got some updates from Marceau. So um, Ethan Hughes asked um, a question of Marceau saying, is there an estimated APR for running a Rocket Pool mini pool taking into account the staking APR and RPL rewards? So Marceau says um, with 32 ETH solo staker baseline is 4.43%. With 16 ETH mini pools, it goes up to 5.45%, which is I guess a nearly 20% increase. And then with 8 ETH mini pools or LEB8s, it goes up to... 
6.92%, which I think is roughly 50% um, um, increase. Um, and then Maso says assumptions using um, minimum RPL collateral required and not adjusted for RPL inflation. Then there's a screenshot from one of Maso's sheets here and um, saying that basically if you are on LEB uh, on, um, on 16, then you... Um, get a range of rewards that start at 5.4% all the way up to 7.46% uh, uh, blended. With um, LEB 8s, you go up a lot compared to um, on 16. And then the 4 um, the four ETH will actually go up um, even more if that comes to 8.5%. Although I think the, the rewards will be nerfed a little bit at that point and like the commission rate will come down so it won't be that high. And then a hypothetical 2 ETH mini pool LEB2 um, will go at nearly 10%. So there's there's some really amazing stuff here. Um, and um, the, re the rewards are just fantastic. So that was some good information by Maso there. And then Maso had another tweet as well saying, I'm having one of those nobody's ready for what's about to happen moments. Um, staking is... Uh, ready for its hockey stick growth moment now that the transition to proof of stake is complete with the ability to redeem so of course you know the ability to redeem will be here with um, Shanghai and um, Capella and then Atlas for Rocket Pool um, so Marcel saying some really really big things will be coming with that and then um, he kind of explains what he means by that you know, with some factors so he says the institutions are coming so he says now actually institutions will actually come um, and then he says liquid staking will shine that some really big stuff will be happening with LSDs as more and more people move towards LSDs. And then he says, says restaking. And as much has been said about Eigenlayer, perhaps too much. And the concept of, um, you know, re hypothecating staked collateral. I don't want to get too much into that here, but it's clearly a trend that will continue and, the, and extend the stake frontier of staking. And he says there's some estimates for uh, APR um, that they'll go down for actual staking. But with... Um, with restaking, you could boost it a whole lot, which will be really attractive to node operators. And then my source says, I haven't been this excited about ETH since the explosion of projects in 2017. There's a lot to look forward to in 2023. Okay, next we have this update from Butter, who says, uh, Butter says that um, LEB8 will now um, be supported in uh, the Beacon Chain app, and uh, uh, Butter already wrote the code, and um, that information will now, now be out there. So, um, that's really cool because almost every node operator uses the Beacon Chain app. It's an amazing resource. So thank you for that, Butter. Um, okay, last week we had um, some questions about Lodestar and like whether or not they'll be able to see um, Rocket Pool node operators as um, people using their you know incentives. And Phil knows who's one of the people on Lodestar team says I don't foresee this as being a problem as long as we can identify all the combinations of graffiti you guys use to indicate Lodestar as a consensus client. We can easily verify if they are in fact Rocket Pool operators and we would still run it through block print to verify. The graffiti just helps do a first layer filter on which blocks we should focus on. So that was really great to see. And then we had a bit more information from Phil Knows who says update our uh, blog post. Um, thanks for switching over and trying out Lodestar. Please reach out to us if you're experiencing any issues, though we'd like to hear from uh, Joe first. And then they had a blog post about that as well, where they said in, in the incentive program, they give details about um, eligibility and um, the graffiti. And then it says updated note um, for Rocket Pool node operators. This incentive will also accept the default Rocket Pool smart node graffiti, which identifies Lodestar as their consensus client. Lodestar blocks proposed with any of the following will meet graffiti requirements. And then there's RPGS, RPNS, RPBS, and RPXS. So those are the different um, consensus, uh, sorry, execution clients with Lodestar, which is the S. So that was really great. Now going back to the nouns thing earlier, now this leaves enough characters for you to put the nouns glasses in your uh, graffiti too so you can go for both incentives at the same time okay um next um we had this thing that i want to talk about really briefly um about a lot of hype going around the rpl token right now and it's kind of been like um rising up these last few days as the price like is um kind of grinding its way upwards um and there's a whole lot of tweets like this out there. I don't want to talk about the price too much, but I just want to tell you all like to be a little bit careful about like this hype stuff. Um, I love hyping, like don't get me wrong, and I'm like chief hype <laughs> on the on the ping forum. But um, 
just be really careful getting caught up in the hype and um, you know extending yourselves in a position that might not be um, sustainable because um, you never know what's going to happen with with tokens so please don't <laughs> Please don't get yourself into a position where you know you're risking being overextended or losing um, losing money by leverage or anything like that. Please, please, please be careful um, trying to trade um, RPL during this period because I really expect there's going to be a lot of um, market swings and um, what I like to call like effery, like not that that of course. But um, yeah, just uh, please be careful of of uh, getting caught up in this hype because um, you. I don't want you guys to get burned by I'm burned with that. Okay, next I want to talk about um, the pop art. Um, hold on a second, let me just uh, zoom here. So there's going to be a pixel art for uh, uh, Chappella, Shanghai and Capella, and um, uh, the canvas will give you um, access to uh, placing pixels if you have any of the following pop-ups. So valid events, you know, there's stuff like you met Fizz in person, you met Patricio in person, you met a whole bunch of people from the... Um, pop team in person and then there's some like specific community um community pops for like being part of bankless attending the berlin hard fork party being around for the london upgrade and then there's a couple of rocket pool specific ones as well like locket pool, pool launch party pixel placer and um a whole bunch of other ones as well so uh, people most likely have some of these pops and if you don't you can go and mint the Ethereum Min Chappella Painting Party pop. I think it's two dollars plus gas fees um, to mint that pop, and then you can be ready for the pop party tomorrow afternoon Eastern Time. Okay, next I want to give a shout out to Eat Staker as well for all that they're doing, getting ready for the Chappella live stream. Um, that will go out at six p.m. Eastern Time, thirty minutes before the fork. So it'll go out uh, on Wednesday evening, um, and then you can adjust your time zones according to that. Um, so definitely. Um, definitely uh, look out for any more uh, information from them um, the youtube link is already active so you can like uh, set reminders for that okay next we have um this big chunk of um drama oh no i'm sorry sorry i'm getting ahead of myself okay so there's been a whole lot of talk about eigenlayer over the last few days because they launched their um discord channel and they're talking about you know um, starting their trial stuff so People started asking uh, in the Rocketpool community if there's any sort of like soft agreements regarding uh, integrations with Rocketpool and Eigenlayer. Um, and uh, this person, Eh, said, um, I've heard that um, Eigenlayer Labs uh, likes uh, RETH over other LSTs, but nothing concrete. And Maverick says, we're chatting with them, nothing more to share at this time. I mean, it's public knowledge that Eigenlayer is all about decentralization and it follows that the only slash most decentralized protocol would be on their radar. So uh, there's not really anything new in that information, but um, <laughs> but um, it's it's nice that Maverick's kind of teasing um, teasing that information as well. So um, definitely keep your eyes open. Also, of course, um, Ken had this message saying, "Joe, you're here. It's been uh, a day on Gurley. So what's been happening is that um, <laughs> everyone's asking Joe to burn his Gurley R ETH." And the reason for that is because um, the deposit pool on Gurley was full because so many people were minting our ETH to take part in the Eigenlayer uh, testing. Um, and that was, um, <laughs> it was really clogging up um, the Gurley systems because of that. So um, I think that situation might have calmed down a little bit now, but um, yeah, it says, uh, Chaos says, all the people testing Eigenlayer have been filling it up, and since they can't get RETH anymore, they've been getting STETH instead. So, of course, we want to keep them in the in the RETH fam. So, um, there's a few big holders of uh, RETH, like Joe and Ramana and others. So, um, get get that minted or spin up more uh, mini pools, uh, LEB8s preferably, um, on, um, uh, on Gurley to take up some of that space in the deposit pool. Okay, and... Um, Okay, now now to get to, um, sorry, I mixed up a post again. So um, there was an issue with Lido where they didn't um, 
get their tokens um, rebased in the right way. And Lido had this tweet saying today's STE3 base is going to be delayed due to an edge case bug in an off-chain Oracle code. There are no funds at risk and all rewards are still going to be accounted for. So people are kind of wondering what's going on over here. Like why is there rewards? Is there reward tree not generating? And uh, Valdos says no, it's a different GT. It's equivalent to our balance submission that happens every 19.2 um, hours. And... Um, So they, they had an issue with their version of the order basically not being able to get the um, information right. So people were kind of wondering, um, you know, like Ethereum Bull was saying, oh, golly, that would suck if Lido couldn't enable withdrawals. And Valdo said it's a minor error. Rocky Pool had two such issues in last fall, by the way. And he said something about glass houses. So um, I just want to make that aware to you, to you all that that was happening. Okay, and now I'm going to cover the drama, but I'm not going to go into too much detail because everyone's kind of already aware of what's going on. So one of the things that happened was in um, in Discord, someone pasted screenshots from the Stata Labs um, Stata Labs uh, GitHub, saying um, you know remove all trace of Rocket Pool and put in Stata CLI in there instead. So here you know, there's line remove and right line replace, line remove, right line replace, and um, Marcel shared this tweet, and um, then there was. Um, there was this screenshot as well of like someone says we need to remove this rocket pool reference and a person replied by saying we can't remove this one otherwise we'd have to make our own builds and docker images which is additional work at the moment and this is a reference to the docker image so um there's still going to be some you know traces of rocket pool left in their in their cli stuff in their um basically their version of the smart node stack which is what they're forked so uh Maso was kind of like teasing them with um putting out these screenshots and people started commenting about how you know they um they they're taking other people's work stealing work ethereum bull here was making quite strong statements about that um and then maso says you know there's nothing wrong with forking code but um some of the best development has happened that way and openness uh, composability is a hallmark feature of uh, crypto and he says that there's ways of doing it um and the way Stata could have done this the right way and it would have been a smashing success. And he says, but GPL V3 is there for a reason. And then Amit, who's on the Stata team, says, um, I think you are refusing to see beyond your rocket pool bags, which I think was a bit of a low blow there, especially since Marcel was, you know, kind of um, talking about um, how forking itself is not so bad. And then, uh, you know, they're talking, then they're going over the old points again of how... Um, 13 uh, modules were made from scratch and one came from rocket pool and then uh, people started kind of like joking about them and like sharing all this different information about um what's going on and what's not going on and it was a whole big discussion basically of um what stater have and haven't done um and then that kind of this whole discussion kind of caught fire and then um um uh, Shalini came into trading and said um, in the spirit of transparency and you know we've attributed credit to rocket pool um and here's you know the what we're doing about the gpl version 3 license reference and uh, the blog post detailing information here's all our github stuff and you know he says the same has been communicated to rocket pool team with the launch of ethx uh, rolling beta um and he says you know incorporating open source is a uh, common practice in software development and even more so in blockchain stuff so that that was out there and then um there was a tweet here from meg saying sorry to ping you dave but the um stata founder thinks they've talked to you and then dave says oh uh, thanks to this may but just in regard to this the same had been communicated to rocket pool team with the launch of the ethx rolling beta he says i can't dave says i can't um uh, say that i've heard of this until now and then who did you talk to in the team um and um dave says you know i've never talked to them or anyone from stata and who do they think is the founder um oh, wait that's kind of going out a little bit out of order here but um it turns out you know the person talked to um langers and um mav um trying to um, clear some stuff up and we're going to come back to that but there was a community sentiment that was kind of going out where you know like here captain uh, timon says i'm more concerned as an rpl holder with the fact that rocket pool community is acting in a very toxic way versus a competitor competitor that's on the permissionless side of things we really don't need it uniswap has been forked 400 times and i don't see them whining compound has been forked 85 times um, and this sentiment kind of started to come through a lot um donda says basically character judgments are not helpful and in fact can be toxic debate the content the approach matters Matters. if there's a problem with the person that's what moderators are for and uh, d2 says <coughs> 
And D2 said, even if someone doesn't support Rocky Pool, there's no need to attack them. There's several cases of members in this community channel becoming uh, a pitch pot, pot pitchforky mob and turning toxic even against other rocket pool community members getting overtly defensive and attacking others is, isn't a good look even if they're not a rocket pool supporter so this is the sentiment that i share a lot here as well is like you know please be kind and kind in your words because they really do matter and then um um Stader's, uh um, head of uh, community said uh, that you know our co-founder talked to darren langley general manager rocket pool and um amit the uh, incorrectly called them the founder and sorry for the confusion um, and they said that people from their team also talked to Mav um, and he says that whenever you guys have any doubt about Stasia if you want you can tag me and I'll come and try to clarify it in the spirit of, uh, spirit of better relationship and communication among communities if there's some banned people from the state of discord please let me know their IDs and we'll unban them um, it was not done in bad faith um, of course you know, Maverick was one of those people who got banned and then um, um here there's a screenshot of you know saying one of our business team talked to to nick um and uh Mav who's maverick from the rp Mav uh, marketing team he says spicy reply coming to this this is misleading um and then the um, the idea is like the guy put from their community said i'm not sure what the confusion is about a message darren on the 27th um and you know kind of like talked talked out and stuff and then mav replied by saying i was referring to claim that uh, shanmug talked to me it was actually the one to establish contact via telegram about 10 days ago i after the beta launched i asked them to clarify this author section of the forked code because we don't want people thinking the rocky pool team built the stata version or holding our guys accountable for any issues it's a bit misleading to suggest that there were any um, attempt from uh, Shanmug to proactively communicate or engage in discussion so it's just um, uh, Mav was saying that you know they're kind of uh, distorting the events to make themselves look better and you know on the on the stated documents it still says that Rocky Pool team were the authors of that so um, I've just wanted to make sure that uh, you know no nothing's going to come back to the Rocky Pool team um Maso then in jest kind of replies by saying um, um, Stada giving employee of the month to their top contributor and their top contributor, contributor is Joe because he's written so many lines of code for the smart note stack and then finally um, Noshua says the Stada stuff is getting really goofy in my opinion community is best served to ignore them um, and the team should do the same or sue them if they're not happy with that so I think that um, you know, there's a couple of pieces of sentiment in there about how we shouldn't be toxic, how we should kind of put our best foot forward when talking to other communities, even when we feel like they've wronged us or they're doing things in a way that we're not happy with. You know, we should maintain decorum because it reflects badly on the Rocket Pool uh, um, community and then sadly on the team. I'm not saying that the community and team have done anything wrong. What I'm just saying is that that element of toxicity kind of permeates and kind of maligns the whole the whole protocol in the whole community which you know we're so much better than that so i really hope that we can um put our best foot forward when talking to other protocols um whether we feel like you know they've wronged us or not wronged us or um anything like that um i think it's really important that we try to build relationships in a positive way um even when you know we want to be critical there's ways of doing that and that doesn't involve um mudslinging um i think like gen gentle teasing is fine um you know like a kind of hazing i i think that's fine other people don't agree with me on that but um we definitely should remove toxicity from from our language maybe you know gentle teasing can be followed by constructive productive uh, conversations and i think that's absolutely fine um it's just we really need to be careful about that line as a community i'm sp speaking about myself and and others that we we kind of need to like put our best foot forward so um normally i wouldn't have covered that drama but it just got so involved and like there were so many different pieces involved in it um that i felt like it was the right thing to just kind of go over but um hopefully that's the end of that story so i hope you all have um, a lovely few days ahead um, i'll have an episode out tomorrow before the ethereum hard fork so um, i'll talk to you all about that in in that episode tomorrow but please 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 update your notes to version 1.9.0 or, or newer so thank you for watching rocket fuel i'll see you all tomorrow bye